Okay, guys, so that picture slide. It is, believe it or not, are the images you have in your head when we speak of the term farmer. If ever we're in discussion of a person called a farmer, those are the type of images that pop up in your head. Right? Of course I'm right. I am right. You know why? Because the next picture of slides I will show you are the type of images that pop up into your head when we speak of the term farm. I will show you right now. Exactly. So if I am wrong in any say essence, please challenge me to a dual fight. Because the entire concept of this video right now, it will be about how this mentality we have of a person called a farmer and the term farm, these images that we have in our head are weighing us down to actually start farming of our own. All these beautified images are weighing you down. Personally, yes, I'm speaking to you to actually start a farming journey of your own. Greetings everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Snagelo. The channel is called Building a Farm with Snagelo. Snagelo is me and I'm very grateful to my new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel as we engage in many different agricultural talks, but it won't end there, honey. I've got a surprise I have to mention at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So quick question, where do all of this mentality come from that whenever we think of a farmer and his farm we think of all these tractors all these large size um land all of these ford rangers and toyotas and god knows what is next even buildings or tractors all of these images where do they come from because as a south african we have this concept with a farmer should possess all of these materialistic things to be classified as a farmer so guys i want us to look back with the, and try to find you know the foundation of with the, where does this entire concept actually come from because i kid you not if i call myself a farmer and i do not possess those things then 99.9% .9 of you will not classify me as a farmer because I do not possess all of what I've mentioned. So where does this mentality actually come from? Is it, does social media has a role to play in this? It might, but we cannot per se blame social media on this. I would say that you know, back when we were growing up, right? I would point it on childhood mentality. Because as kids, our forefathers, grandchildren, grand grandparents and parents actually worked in the farms, right? And the farms that they worked on were big farms, very big farms with lots of workers. It had every type of equipment you could possibly think of, you know, in, in, in agriculture. You know, it was extra this, extra that. So as we grow up as kids to adults, we had this thing of that, the it factor of a farmer, you know, is everything large. The bigger, the better the more the merrier right they should pos a farmer should possess a big land right uh, if they have big lands then obviously the big land is associated with success and the success is associated with more wealth right but just to clarify things along the way social media happened obviously and it beautified everything uh, because it promoted agriculture and farming uh, on us as the youth. But then they beautified everything, right? So with that being said, that is the role I would say, you know, childhood and social media has has into, has 
put into effect in our brains. It has played a psychological impact in our minds. With if you classify yourself as a farmer, then these are the things that you should possess. And this mentality is the one thing. It is the biggest monster that is weighing us down in starting farming in starting our farming journeys because we feel like if we do not possess all of these things as farmers then we're not successful then we will be a laughing stock then if i possess if i claim myself as a farmer i f and, and 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 i'm doing everything at a you know small then i fear laughter be it from your neighbors be it judgment from social media obviously because wow you know but guys i'm here to rescue you because i'm getting paid we will not be burnt alive because of these whole misconceptions that you have of a term called farmer and cake when if you feel like the term called farmer is 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 is, is, is gonna have to below anyone's you know sweat blood and tears because when now the term farmer to you is is just this luxury then don't emphasize that on us do not emphasize that on other kids because even you who is being belittled do not let that um affect you do not because the little that you are doing right now it is in the right part you are doing it right so okay as i move on guys what is exactly is a farmer so i went to google obviously and i google searched just to you know give you a term so you can discuss what is a farmer so the first uh, definition i had was a farmer is a person who cultivates land or crops or raises animals that's the first definition. The second definition is, I want you to listen to this one, guys. The definition of a farmer is a person who owns, works on, or operates an agricultural enterprise, either commercially or to sustain himself or his family. Did you hear that part? Now we move to the term farm. What is the definition of the term farm? You'll find this on Google, guys. Wikipedia, Oxford, whoever. Now we move. A farm is an area of land that is devoted primarily to agricultural processes with the primary objective of producing food, such as raising animals and other crops. It is the basic facility in food production. Did you get that? Did you get all of those definitions? I hope you did. Because all of those definitions that I've just mentioned, they have absolutely nothing to do with the size of land. Nothing to do with the size of land. Nothing to do with the large size of land that you assume that a farmer should own. Nothing. Number two, it has nothing to do with the type of assets that you as a farmer should own in your land area. Whether it is a farmhouse, big tractors, um, your equipment aligned with your um implement it has got nothing to do with that and thirdly it has nothing to do with the amount of workers that you should hire as a farmer god guys come on what's the pressure then what is the pressure because i know for a fact with if you are growing something in your backyard whatever you're growing or whatever you are raising whether it's in your backyard your garage on the rooftop on the corner if that thing you are doing is aligned with the objectives of farming best believe you are a farmer if whatever you are doing guys sustains you as a person you are a farmer if guys if whatever you are doing is a market worthy, being market worthy, I'm talking about you can sell to individuals, communities, you can you can sell to stores. 
you are a farmer. If it is operational and sustainable, you are a farmer. If your operation or production provides revenue for you to pay for your operational cost and sustain your production and also revenue uh, for income purposes, then you are a farmer. You do not have to supply for shop rights or pick and pay or check hats or rewards in order for you to be defined as a farmer. You don't have to own those big baggies in order for you to be accepted as a farmer. You don't own, you have to own thousands or hundreds of hectares in order for you to be associated as a farmer. And you don't even have to wear that uniform costam for you to be distinguished as a farmer. Like, come on guys, please. This is the issue with us. The issue is us. All of these checklists that we have, we put on ourselves, it is weighing us down to actually even start anything at this point. I kid you not, at this point right now, we have people that are farmers, but they don't know it because they believe Wuti. Ish, I don't have the land, so I can't be a farmer. We have, in our township, guys, in our townships, we have people that, you know, are farming chickens whether it's broiler chickens or layers in their garages and them farming chickens guys they've been doing it for months they've been doing it for years and the business is booming they're able to sell this to communities to people to even stores they're able to with the money that they receive to buy you know other operational um 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 um, um, um resources in order, you know, to, 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 to keep the cycle going. They're able to feed themselves and their families. But because they're doing it in their own space, in the small space, in the tiny yana, uh, background of whatever, you do not recognize them as farmers. And that is wrong. A lot of us guys are sitting here, literally waiting for funding. Funding from who, exactly? Where are you gonna get this funding? That you are sitting down here thinking about we are sitting here as as black people i'm just gonna put it out there waiting for funding we are paying for funding you know very well the funding would probably take you 10 years if 20 and some of you will not even receive that funding you're waiting for funding you're waiting for sponsors you're waiting for handouts because you want to do it big some of you are taking loans that you absolutely will not pay back let's be honest you will not afford to pay back some of you are sitting there waiting to have access to land it will not come baba it won't because you are failing to use the land that you have whether even if it's your garden or anything and you want to farm on big lands i'm not saying i'm destroying dreams I'm not saying, okay, maybe I was wrong for saying the land won't come. Probably will come, in the, you know. But when you, how old will you be when the land has come to you? At what age? Hi, guys. No, man. This mentality that we have, it is killing us. It is refraining us to start anything, you know. Gandhi, the most important factor is starting small, starting where you can. And growing is important. You learn, you grow, and you expand, Baba. That's the, the, that's the trick in this, in this field. You start small, you learn, you grow, you expand. Start with what you have, with what you can afford. Not waiting for land and, and, and funding and, 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 and handouts. That you probably not even get. If you get, you'll be 60 or 50. And you can't even work on the land then because you just got like arthritis. Like, guys, I don't get it. Like, like, like at this point, we have technology at this point. We've got technology. People are now growing in their balconies. Supplying microgreens, guys. Like... A balcony, yeah, it's a small area. Can you like imagine how a balcony is small? But because of vertical farming, right? People are growing microgreens and supplying to uh, the restaurants. That's how farming has evolved. 
and when are you using your balcony for push-ups i'm sorry <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm trying to understand where this is going guys and and, and garages are very useful for, for for poultry farming your chickens even your your, your backyards like i okay i've seen in, in my other you know um ekasi they now farm goats in their backyards every day but they're getting money though that's the whole point and you are a farmer whether you like it or not if you're doing anything agriculture related that has to do with farming you're growing or you're rearing animals and sustains you you are a farmer no matter the scale you don't have to go big you don't have to you are a farmer within your own right. Like even the farmers that you see on social media right now, there's a girl called, what? Is it Tabete? Yes, I once mentioned her on, on, on one of my um videos, my first videos. She was an engineer. Untando Tabete. Yeah, I think it's Tando Tabete. She says she was an engineer, she got fired and, and she grew green peppers in her backyard in her backyard and, and she supplied for pick and pay with those green peppers because baba it's it's all about quality you cannot improvise on quality game badly it's all about quality and the valuable crop that you choose to grow it will it will it will be the one that you know sets you to extinguish a market a finer market your 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 fine stores and so on but look at where she is now. Girl has got these big greenhouses like Elasha, you know, like a Tesla car. She's doing an amazing work. Because, you know, the thing is, I, on social media, they will show you a lot of I've made it type of pictures instead of showing you how I've started, how I challenge, I got, you know, so many challenges, that, the challenges that I faced. You won't see that, obviously. You'd see how I made it. People sitting on tractors. I'm not saying it's wrong, guys. But I'm saying is, what you see is not what really is. And what you see, the I made it type of images, and the entire psychological image you have, when you're a kid, you have, you know, a farmer or a farmer or whatever. Those type of pictures, and that it creates pressure on you. It creates fear. It installs so much fear and pressure that you decide to know I'd rather write a business plan and take a loan or write a business plan and you know go for funding. Like at this point, if you see like the country is, is going in turmoil, where are you gonna get the funds? No man, that mentality is wrong. Fray away from that mentality, guys. Fray away from that mentality. So again, Jamie, I, I am done with this topic right now. Okay, but you know, back then I remember um, I used to do, uh, okay, what I used to do, it didn't have anything to do with farming, but it had everything to do with agriculture. I used to sell it built on uh, 2018, 19. I used to sell built on uh, and I used to package it and, you know, um, and sell it to Caltex, if you know uh, Caltex Garage and also Top Slicker stores. It was very small, guys. I did it at home. But the whatever quantities I get, I was, you know, I made those quantities, but I did not improvise on quality baba. That quality was the one that made them to call me at all times and say, can we please have your belt on? Because, it, 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 you know, it will not... It will not even last a day, guys, and it was gone on the shelves. I was doing it in my in, in in my home's kitchen, you know, invading my parents' space. But because now I'm doing it in the kitchen, now I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not titled as an entrepreneur. It's not happening. It is not happening. Like at this point, I have, 
I'm, 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 I'm happy to announce that I now have, you know, Instagram. So we can communicate, guys, because this emailing thing, it, it's just too formal, right? So I was busy browsing around these, um, um, these hashtags called Young and Farming, Farming SA. You know, it's beautiful stuff, guys. Beautiful. I am so inspired, really, really inspired to such an extent that I have decided, this is a surprise, I have decided that um, in all, I, I will, okay, how do I put it? I've just stopped being on the desk and discussing this thing called agriculture or farming. Now I want to go to the people. I want to go to your farmers and interview them. I want you to see something. I want you to see how they do it, how they how they farming, you know, how they're growing, their developments, their challenges, their ups and downs. But they're still doing it. That's what I want to broadcast on this channel right now. I want to go to people who are farming in the comforts of their own home and they're comfortable with it and they've been doing it for years or months and they're doing it good. And they're even supplying for your known brands. Even supplying for whoever. It is okay. Those are the people I want to interview, guys. So if you know them, if you even if it's your neighbor, if you know them, please DM me. I've got a my twi uh, my Instagram handle is sane sinagegelo underscore b with a small b. Please uh, follow me and DM me their um, 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 names or whatever reference you want. I will obviously reach out to them and you know tell them my story, and then you know just you know give me their credentials so. I will go to them and do the work of the Lord. So I can, guys, help me help us all. Because starting a farm, building a farm, it is doable for anybody. It does not require millions. It does not require those hundred thousands that you think. Even that 350 nyana sasa that we get, it, 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 it does wonders. So help me help us all. Uh, comment on you know um the people that you want me to interview i can do kezren i can do Gauteng, i can also do Mpumalanga for now those are the only three provinces that i can you know do uh i wish to go further but i can only afford only those three provinces uh just to interview you know uh people uh it will be inspiring and it will motivate you guys to an extent because i will not ask you your, your typical questions. You know, I want them to give me, I want them to be transparent as they can. I want me to give you those small and little details, you know, that actually triggered them, that triggered their success in this farming thing. You know, I want to promote small scale farming in this country, whether, wherever you do it. Guys, and remember, bear in mind, Witty, how, how the, 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 whether your area that you choose to farm in is small, how small your area is, it's not an issue. We have technology at this point. Make use of technology if you have an issue with finding land. We have Google, we have YouTube. Use those. And also your neighbors. Look at what they're doing, you know. Be inspired. So that's it from me to you guys. I just had to get this thing off my chest. Thank God I did. Now we can, you know, move on and farm. You know, um, don't forget to subscribe and also share this video to whoever I might save someone's day with this. Uh,